Hello, and welcome to the Kitty Cat Lane. My name is Lane, and today I'm going to be sharing my redesign of one of my oldest characters from my first original story. The story is still a work in progress, and I'm a little self-conscious about sharing my ideas out loud because in my head, something can sound really cool and make perfect sense. But, you know, when I try to explain it to someone else, it just doesn't come out right or isn't as cool as I originally thought. Especially since these were ideas from, like, a decade ago, and I haven't really been reworking or revisiting them much in the past five years or so. So, to jump right into things, in this story, all of my main characters and the majority of the population are dragons. But not your typical dragons. They're more like the dragonborn Dungeons and Dragons race. They're bipedal or anthropomorphic dragons. At the time that I was first creating this story and drawing these characters, I was really not confident in my ability to draw dragons. So I drew them as humans since I was more comfortable drawing people. These characters were always meant to be dragons, but I would say that I was drawing them in their human form. I'm stepping away from the human form thing as I move towards figuring out the actual story that I want to tell but I'll forever have and love the alternate universe where they either are humans or have human forms. Since the time when I was first creating and drawing these characters, I've really grown as an artist. I've worked on my dragon art until I was happy with it, and... Well, I'd like to say that I've been redrawing all my dragons as dragons, but... Truthfully, I've not really gotten around to redesigning that many of these characters as their true dragon selves. A little while ago, I made a video where I did a three-step process of redrawing, updating, and redesigning another old character from this same series. For that character, I never really liked how he looked, so I wanted to fix up that human design before I totally remade him as a dragon. But I've drawn a slightly more updated human version of this character somewhat recently for one of those OC memes, so I didn't really feel the need to redraw her as a human again for this redesign. So let's go ahead and talk about the dragon redesign. This character has always been called Mari. I may end up changing her name, or at least how it's spelled later as I rework her story, but I love Mari very much. Her human design isn't anything to write home about, but she has a special place in my heart as one of my first 10 characters. She's basically a mother figure to two of the main characters, and she has important intel on some of the biggest secrets of this story. She's very kind, intelligent, and skilled with her powers, but she's also quite reserved and humble, and from an outwards perspective, some might find her reclusive, elusive, or secretive. She's a little too protective of the ones she loves, and as a result, may seem overbearing at times. But her intentions are always good. I say all this knowing that I might remake some of this because as I was writing this down, I'm like, oh, she kind of sounds like a Mary Sue, but <laughs> what's wrong with that? <laughs> Don't come at me. But to set aside her story for a moment, to brief you on how some of my world works in this story, the majority of the population are these dragons, as I mentioned earlier. But I've been calling them demi-dragons because in this world there are real full-size dragons, so when it's in written form it's nice to have a clear distinction between the two. Each demi-dragon typically has a special power or ability that's passed down from one or sometimes both of their parents. The abilities are like superhero powers and are very versatile, so the possibilities are nearly endless. That's how I ended up with many, 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 many different characters. This world is a magic-based world, but for most of the magic, you are either born with it, or, more specifically, born with the potential to learn it. The demi-dragons don't know what their magical abilities are until they are around the ages of 8 to 10. Then they will start to show hints of their powers, and they should be able to feel a connection to their magical abilities through their soul. Magical abilities are tied to each demi-dragon's soul, and if they are strong-willed enough, they can tap into their inner strengths and harness their ability. 
Sometimes they never find that connection or are never able to fully grasp and harness their true potential through their soul-bound magic. Another important feature for these demi-dragons is their wings. From most common to least common, they can have webbed wings, feathered wings, insect wings, or in rare occasions, they don't develop wings at all. Mari has butterfly wings and her magical ability is a less common one. Originally, I would describe her ability as pixely and glitch-like. She could glitch in and out of places and reform her pixelated particles into other shapes and such. She could do all sorts of overpowered tricks just because I said she could. Now that I'm redesigning her and trying to keep things more fantasy-ish and also just better establish rules of this world, I wanted to try and rework it to be less modern sounding and more realistic in this world. So I thought about other core parts of her, like her bug wings, and not only is she covered in scales as a dragon, but also butterfly wings are made up of tiny scales too. So I thought she could flake away into little scales and scale-shaped particles. So it basically works the same, but uh, instead of it being pixely, it's more organic. I also dialed back on how her ability works so that it wasn't as overpowered. The most overpowered thing that she used to be able to do was to basically be able to teleport anywhere, anytime, at no cost. She could even teleport her hand somewhere to fetch something and teleport it back to her body. But now, for this redesign, it's a bit more local. She could send her arm away somewhere in a different room, but she would have to focus to feel around and know her surroundings and feel her way to whatever object she was fetching. Then she would have to feel her way back to her body while carrying the object with her. So not quite as easy as snap your fingers, it's there and back. She can still rearrange her scales and turn into little particles to just funnel her way through a crack under the door or quickly wisp around in the air to get around, but unlike before, she can't just phase in and out of any space. She can also still change her physique, but she has to use parts of herself to add to herself. So for an example, she could flake away her hair and use it to add mass to her arms, or she could flake away her tail to then bring it back to add length to her legs. She couldn't just make more scales or particles from nothing. All of that might not make much sense, and I was having a hard time drawing demonstrations of her using her ability, but hopefully you're still able to follow along. In these drawings, I drew her making some of her scales and part of her face flake away to open her jaw even wider, and then taking some of those flaked away bits of her face and some from her hair to add length to her tongue to become more intimidating. I also drew her starting to flake off and wisp away, and her sending her hand off to claw at something, as well as her just sending off bits and scales to try and cut through something. I know these aren't the best illustrations for trying to show what I'm trying to tell, but I tried my best to give some demonstrations even if they aren't super realistic to what she would be doing on a regular basis, just to give an idea of what she's capable of. But hey, I could see her doing these things if she had to defend herself or her loved ones, and I don't know, it's the best I could do for showing that versatility through some action shots. Anyway, for her redesign, I tried to keep her fairly simple while adding and updating things as they were necessary. So I gave her a hair-like fur that goes down her spine and to her tail because I thought it would fit her, while also serving the purpose of giving her more material to flake away and use for her ability. I made her eyes more buggy since she has those butterfly wings instead of keeping the soulless looking eyes from the original art I did of her. Speaking of her wings, I wanted to make them look more like actual butterfly or moth wings instead of those weird fin looking things. I also obviously changed her outfit to something that seemed more fantasy. I used more blue to add some other colors of interest and to break up all that pink, plus it complemented her eyes. It also helped brighten up her outfit more too. Then for the skirt, I thought a pretty flowy layered skirt sounded good, and I ended up making them look a little more like flower petals. 
especially in that drawing of her where she's starting to flake away. I really like that. Truthfully, whenever I'm redesigning a character like this, or just making a whole new character, the first time I draw them, I just kind of focus on the design of the features of the actual character and basic overall look without spending too much time worried about the perfect outfit or each little detail. I like getting down something that I think fits or works well enough. Then, after I'm happy with the basic idea and overall look of the character, the next time I work on them, I can focus on the clothes or whatever details I might have left out previously. For example, with my main five, the first time I drew them as dragons, I got the basic ideas down for how I thought they would look as their true selves. But I was also considering the overall look of the group, since they will mostly be seen together. I wanted to make sure that they were easily recognizable from each other and memorable in their own way that was fitting for their characters as individuals. Plus, since they're the main characters, I cared a lot about them and wanted to take my time making sure I liked how they looked. Of course, working on five designs at once got me a little burnt out, so once I was at that point where I had a good enough general idea down, I stepped away. Not too long after that, I tried to refine them and change the things that I just wasn't vibing with, and I even tried out different things for the designs that I was happy with, just to keep my horizons open while I was already reworking the others. And overall, I liked the reworked designs so much better. They definitely felt more refined and way more true to the characters. The only one I'm kind of on the fence about is Kara, the red one. I think I like the overall look of the first redesign of her better, but I think I prefer the dark spines, horns, and claws of the second one. So it was worth redrawing her, just to try out some different ideas and find out what I did and didn't like of the two. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough about my characters long enough. Let me know what you thought, and if you'd be interested in hearing more about this story, or my world building, or if you would like to see more characters redesigned as their true dragon selves. Thank you all so very much for taking a walk down the kitty cat lane with me, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And here's the secret kitty of the day. Bye!